In this video, I'll be making a bowl for the Make a Bowl Without a Lathe challenge that I'm hosting. You'll find a link in the description box to the playlist featuring all of the video submissions. There are some fantastic entries and some really creative ideas from makers ranging from established and well-known YouTubers to those who are just starting out making videos on YouTube. For my build, my idea was to use up some offcuts of plywood that I had left over from two projects which were also covered in videos on my channel. The first was the plywood armchair and the second was these custom desks. I first used SketchUp to design what I wanted to make and the drawing as well as a cut list with all of the dimensions for this project will be available via my Patreon page if you're interested in making one. First I set my table saw fence to rip the plywood into strips and I'm using some 18mm Far Eastern hardwood ply. I set my mitre saw to cut at a 30 degree angle and I cut off the end of one of the strips to create a 30 degree angled stop block, which you'll see that I use later to make the rest of the cuts. And with the longer piece, I measured and marked up the length for the segments that would make up the top segmented hexagon, the largest one, based on the measurements from my drawing. I then lined up the pencil mark with the blade on the right hand side of the mark, which was the waist side of the line, to give me the length I wanted. I could then hold the piece in place and position the stop block where I wanted it using a spring clamp to hold it in place. Then I could make the cut, rotate the workpiece 180 degrees, make the next cut, and so on to give me the six pieces needed to form the first hexagon. The segments for the next segmented hexagon layer would need to be cut slightly shorter, so again I marked up based on the measurements from my drawing, and cut another six pieces to form that hexagon in the same way. And then I cut the rest of the segments to form the smaller hexagons in the same way until I had all of the pieces I needed. For the lower layers of the bowl, the pieces were quite short by this point, so I used a push stick to help keep my fingers a safe distance from the blade. I cleaned up the plywood end grain on each segment using the benchtop sander to get everything nice and smooth. It was much easier to do this now rather than trying to sand it once the hexagons are assembled. I also gently sanded the sharp corners of each segment to round them over slightly, just so that the bowl will feel nicer in the hand once it's assembled. I applied glue to the end of the segments to form each hexagon and positioned them into shape. I'm making multiple of these bowls at the same time, so you'll see here I'm using some cling film so that I can glue up two of the same sized hexagons at the same time. The cling film will help prevent the hexagons from sticking together. For the larger hexagons, I used a ratchet strap to pull the shapes together and get nice tight glue joints. And I did the same again to assemble the rest of the smaller hexagons. When I ran out of ratchet straps, I used a different method for the rest of the hexagons. I used some of this jointing tape which I had laying around, Usually I'd use masking tape for this kind of thing, but I wanted to find a use for this stuff anyway, and it actually worked really well. Once glue was applied to the end of each segment, I positioned them end to end, and then I could roll up the tape to pull the shape together. I cut off the excess tape with a sharp knife, and I could actually reuse that for the next segmented hexagon. I made sure that the segments were sitting level with a few taps from a mallet, and then I added some elastic bands to help apply even pressure around the hexagon. After a couple of hours I could start pulling off the elastic bands, the tape and the ratchet straps. These hexagons wouldn't have been particularly strong at the moment because all of the glue joints were end grain to end grain, so I had to be a little bit careful with them and at this point I sanded the faces of each hexagon at 120 grit. 
I also gently sanded the outside corners of each of the hexagons. The next phase of the glue up would add a lot more strength to the bowl. Starting with the biggest hexagon, I positioned the next layer on top where I wanted it, and once it was all lined up, I made some pencil marks to help me see where I needed to apply glue. I added the glue, positioned the layer on top, and then I could do the same again for the next layer. I lined up all of the layers just by eye and you can see from this camera angle that it's pretty easy to get everything lined up and positioned centrally. I then added some weight and left it for the glue to set. Then I could make the base of each bowl. Using a ruler, I set my compass to half the length that I wanted each edge of the hexagon to be, and then I used that to mark up the hexagon shape. I found a YouTube video that helped me with the method for drawing a perfect hexagon, and I'll link to that video in the description box. I used the bandsaw to cut out those bases. And then I sanded the edges and softened the corners. Because I was making multiple of these bowls at the same time, I could use the first hexagon as a template to mark up the others, which I could then cut out and sand in the same way. To fit the base, I marked up where to apply the glue again, added the glue, and then applied weight. I used some wood filler to fill any small but visible imperfections such as small gaps in between the segments or voids in the end grain of the plywood, and then I sanded it smooth. I then added my maker's mark to the bottom of the bowl. I blew away any dust using the air blower and then I could apply finish and I decided to use spray varnish for this to pop the grain and also give a good level of protection from moisture. I thought that would be best for when the bowls need to be cleaned. Not that I'd ever recommend submerging these bowls in water to clean them but wiping them down with a damp soapy cloth and letting them air dry should be absolutely fine with this finish. I gave the bowls three thin coats of the varnish and then I did some hand sanding at 400 grit just to denib and keep everything smooth and then I applied a final coat. So I made four of these bowls at the same time and it took me about six or seven hours to complete the project. And these are not going to be the most practical bowls in the world, but that's okay because that's not really what I was going for. I wanted to make something that looks interesting and sculptural, more of an art piece, I guess. But they do function well as bowls, as you'll see in these photos. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out and these bowls are for sale via my Etsy page. So if you're interested in checking them out, you'll find a link to that in the description box below. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this is just one of many projects as part of the Make a Bowl Without a Lay Challenge. So if you want to see more bowl projects, then check out the playlist link in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. And thank you for watching.